In this video, we're going to focus on finding the vertex of a parabola of a quadratic equation given in standard form, vertex form, and factored form. So what is standard form? It's this form, y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So to find the vertex, you need to use this equation, which will give you the x-coordinate of the vertex, negative b over 2a. Now, once you get your x value, you can plug this back in to the original equation to get the y value. So that's what we're going to do right now. So let's say if we have this quadratic equation, y is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 3. Now, because this is positive x squared, we know the parabola is going to open upward. And the vertex is basically this point right there. So let's find the x-coordinate of the vertex. So what's a and what's b? a is the number in front of x squared. If you don't see a number, it's a 1. b is the number in front of x, which is negative 4. And c is 3, but we don't need that in this example. So we know that x is negative b over 2a. So that's a negative, and then b is negative 4, divided by 2 times a, which a is 1. Negative times negative 4 is 4, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So now we have the x-coordinate of the vertex. Now we need to find the y-coordinate. So all we're going to do is we're going to replace x with y in that equation. So y is equal to 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 3. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Now 4 minus 8 is negative 4. And negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So the vertex is 2 comma negative 1. So that's how you could find it given an equation in standard form. Now let's try another example. So let's say if we have the equation y is equal to negative 2x squared plus 8x minus 5. So feel free to pause the video and work on this problem. So a is negative 2 and b is equal to 8. So let's use the same formula, x is equal to negative b divided by 2a. So that's going to be negative times positive 8 over 2 times a, where a is negative 2. So we have negative 8 divided by 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. And negative 8 divided by negative 4 is positive 2. So we have the x-coordinate vertex. Now. Let's find the y-coordinate by plugging in back into the original equation. So y is equal to negative 2 times 2 squared plus 8 times 2 minus 5. Now, 2 squared is 4. 8 times 2 is 16. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, and 16 minus 5 is 11. Negative 8 plus 11 or 11 minus 8, that's positive 3. So the vertex is 2 comma 3. Now try these two. y is equal to 4x squared minus 12x and also y is equal to 2x squared minus 9. So for the example on the left, a is 4 and b is negative 12. So using the formula x is equal to negative b divided by 2a, that's going to be negative times negative 12 divided by 2 times 4. So that's 12 divided by 8, which we can reduce it. So 12 is basically 4 times 3, and 8 is 4 times 2. So you can cancel a 4. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is 3 over 2. It's a fraction. So now let's find the y-coordinate. So it's going to be 4 times 3 over 2 squared minus 12 times 3 over 2. Now, 3 over 2 squared. If you square 3, 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4. Now, 12 times 3 is... 36, and 36 divided by 2 is 18. And 4 times 9 over 4, 
the fours will cancel, so you're going to get 9. So this is going to be 9 minus 18, which is equal to negative 9. So that's the vertex for the first example on the right. Now let's focus on this example. So what's A, what's B, and what's C? A is 2. B is the number that, I mean, C is the number that doesn't have an x variable next to it, so C is negative 9. But what's B in this problem? If you don't see an x variable, then there's nothing. B is 0. So in this example, it's going to be negative 0 over 2 times 2. 0 divided by anything except 0 is going to be 0. So negative 0 divided by 4 is just 0. So now that we have the x-coordinate of the vertex, we could find the y-coordinate. So it's going to be 2 times 0 squared minus 9, which is 0 minus 9, and that's negative 9. So for this example, the vertex is 0, negative 9. So that's what you can do if you see a quadratic equation in that form. Now the next form we need to talk about is the vertex form, which is y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. So for this one, you really don't have to do any calculation. You could just look at it and see what the vertex is going to be. The vertex is hk. So here you see negative h, and here you see positive h. So whatever number you see here, you're going to have to switch it. Here is positive k, and this is positive k, so you don't have to switch that number. So I'm going to give you a lot of examples so you can understand what to do. Let's say if y is equal to 3 times x minus 2 squared plus 4. What's the vertex? So whatever number you see here, we see negative 2, just reverse it. So this is going to be positive 2. And don't reverse the number that you see here. So it's going to be 2, comma 4. And that's it. That's how you could find a vertex if you're given a quadratic equation in vertex form. So I'm going to write out a few examples. And in the meantime, go ahead and write the coordinates of the vertex. So the next one, we're going to switch the 4 to negative 4. And this is going to stay the same as negative 5. So it's negative 4 and negative 5. For the third one, we're going to reverse negative 3 to positive 3. And the negative 6, the k value, we're not going to change it. And here, h is negative 3. And k is positive 7. So now you know how to find the vertex of a quadratic equation in vertex form. Now what do you do if you're given a quadratic equation in factored form? How do you find the coordinates of the vertex? I'm going to show you two ways. The first way you probably haven't seen before, but maybe you have. Find the x-intercepts. If you see an x minus 2 factor, the x-intercept is going to be positive 2. And for this factor, x minus 4, the x-intercept is 4. Now, if you were to graph it, we would have a point here and another one here. And because this is positive x squared, if you were to FOIL it, the graph has to look something like this. It turns out that the vertex, the x coordinate of the vertex, is basically the midpoint of the x-intercepts. So if the x-intercepts are 2 and 4, the x-coordinate has to be the average of 2 and 4, so it's going to be 3. Now, intuitively, you can see it, but let's say if you get two numbers and you're not sure what the midpoint is, just add up the two numbers and divide by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we have the x-coordinate of the vertex. Now we need to find the y-coordinate. So we just got to plug it into this equation. This is going to be 3 minus 2 times 3 minus 4. 3 minus 2 is 1. 3 minus 4 
is negative 1. So the vertex is 3, negative 1. Now let's get the same answer using another method. It might be longer, but at least we can confirm this answer. So I'm just going to rewrite the answer that we have. The vertex is 3, 1, or 3, negative 1, actually. Now, what we need to do is we need to FOIL. x times x is x squared. And x times negative 4, that's negative 4x. And then we have negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 4, that's positive 8. Negative 4x minus 2x is negative 6x. So now we have the equation in standard form. So we can see that a is 1 because there's no number in front of x squared. And b is the number in front of x, which is negative 6. So using the formula negative b divided by 2a, that's going to be negative times negative 6 over 2 times 1. So that's equal to positive 6 divided by 2, which is 3. And we can see we have that answer here. So now let's plug it in to the equation. So it's going to be 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 8. 3 squared, which is 3 times 3, that's 9. 6 times 3 is 18. And 9 minus 18 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1. And so that gives us that point. So both methods work. You just have to pick and choose which method you prefer. But let's work on another example. So let's say if we have the formula y is equal to negative 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 5. Go ahead and try this one. So using the first method, we have the x-intercepts as 2 and 5. So what's the midpoint of 2 and 5? It's going to be a decimal, 3.5. Now what you could do is you can add the two numbers and divide by 2. So the midpoint as a fraction is 7 over 2, or 3.5. So that's the x-coordinate of the vertex. So now we've got to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. So let's use the original equation. It's going to be negative 2, and then times 7 over 2 minus 2, and then times 7 over 2 minus 5. Now let's get common denominators. This is 2 over 1. If I multiply this by 2 over 2, that's equivalent to 4 divided by 2. And if I multiply 5 over 1 by 2 over 2, it's negative 10 over 2. 7 minus 4 is 3. 7 minus 10 is negative 3. So now I can cancel a 2. So I have negative times 3 times negative 3. So that's going to be positive 9 divided by this 2. So the vertex is 7 over 2 comma 9 over 2. If you want decimal values, that's 3.5 comma 4.5. Now let's get that answer using the other technique. So let's begin by foiling x minus 2 and x minus 5. So we have x times x. which is x squared, and then x times negative 5, so that's negative 5x, and this is negative 2x, and finally negative 2 times negative 5, which is positive 2. So next, let's combine like terms. Negative 5x minus 2x is negative 7x. Now the last thing we need to do is distribute the negative 2. So first we're going to have negative 2x squared, and then it's negative 2 times negative 7x, which is positive 14x, and then negative 2 times 10, which is negative 20. So now we have the equation in standard form. So let's find the vertex, negative b over 2a. So we can see that b is positive 14. And a is negative 2. 
Now, 14, we can break that into 7 times 2. So notice that we can cancel a 2. Negative 7 divided by negative 2 is the same as positive 7 over 2. So as you can see, we have the x-coordinate of the vertex. 7 over 2 is equal to 3.5. So let me just make some space here. And I'm just going to rewrite this formula on top. So now let's plug in this number into this equation. So it's going to be negative 2 times 7 over 2 squared plus 14 times 7 over 2 minus 20. 7 squared is 49. And 2 squared is 4, but I'm going to leave it as 2 times 2. Now, instead of multiplying 14 by 7, it's easier if you divide first. 14 divided by 2 is 7. And then take that 7, multiply by this 7. That's going to give you 49. So 14 times 7 over 2 is 49. Next, I'm going to cancel a 2. So I'm left over with negative 49 divided by 2. And 49 minus 20 is positive 29, which I'm going to write as 29 over 1. Now, we need to get common denominators, so I'm going to multiply this fraction by 2 over 2. So it's negative 49 over 2 plus 29 times 2. 20 times 2 is 40. 9 times 2 is 18. When you add them, that's 58. So negative 49 plus 58, or 58 minus 49, that's 9. So this is 9 over 2, which we do have that here. 9 over 2 is the same as 4.5. So both ways work. You just have to pick which way is easier. Personally, I think the first method is a lot easier than the second. But you can choose. So now you know how to find the vertex of a parabola given a quadratic equation in standard form, vertex form, and factored form. Thanks for watching.